Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You use it or you lose it. In God's economy, if you don't use what God's given you, then he will get somebody else to do what you have the opportunity to do. Every one of you are in ministry. Now, you're probably familiar with the parable of talents. How many of you are familiar with the parable of the talents? In um, Matthew chapter 25, where the owner of the vineyard goes away and he, he leaves several of his servants with a certain amount of money and expected them to invest it and use it. Then when he came back to give him more than what he had left them with. And I'm not going to turn to the story and tell the whole thing, but the first one invested his, got some back, second one did the same thing, third one did the same thing. The fourth one was afraid, and he hid his in the ground. So when the master came back, the first three he talked to, he did a good job, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he didn't give all of them the same amount. He gave them according to what they could handle. So God doesn't expect the same thing out of all of us. We're not all called to write 120 books. We're not all called to do the same thing. We're not all called to be able to sing like, like Phil does. But whatever we can do, it's a gift that God put in us. And he put it in us for somebody else. Are you there? So, for me to be sit out there and be jealous of somebody up here that can sing real good is so ridiculous because God didn't give them the gift for their benefit. He put the gift in them so you could be blessed. I tell people, God gave me a gift to speak. All it causes me to do is work. It's for you. It's not for me. Now, I enjoy what I'm doing, but I get the work part, and you get to go enjoy it, you know? You don't have to be in the back room, back room singing notes and practicing music and doing exercises with your voice every day. There's work to what people do. And so God gives us a little something, what we can handle, and he expects to get back more than what he gave because he is a God of multiplication. And to the last guy who said, well, I was afraid and I hid what you gave me. But now here I can give you back what you gave me. God called him a wicked, lazy, idle servant. And he said, take it away from him and give it to the one who has the most. And so it's very simple. You use it or you lose it. In God's economy, if you don't use what God's given you, then he will get somebody else to do what you have the opportunity to do. Every one of you are in ministry. I now announce to you that every one of you are ordained. If you're a believer, you are ordained for ministry. Amen. <laughs> well, let's talk about the curse of busyness. <laughs> How many of you are too busy? Come on, don't give me none of this stuff. Let's see. When one of my granddaughters was eight years old, she's now 18, and she's actually here in the service. Abby, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I'm trying to find exactly what you said so I don't mess it up. But she had to do some kind of paper about if you were going to give a gift, what kind of gift would you give? And she said, If I could give a gift to anybody, I'd give my grandma the gift of time because she's always so busy. <laughs> and 
And uh, so people notice. She was eight. And she noticed that her grandma was busy all the time. Don't be so busy just being busy that you don't have time for the things in your life that are really the most important. Don't just park your kid in front of a television. Talk to them. Amen. Americans are so busy, and we wear our busyness like a badge. We're proud of it. Let me tell you how busy I am and how much I've been doing. And sometimes I just want to say, but is it worth anything? Or, or is it even what you're supposed to be doing? And today in our society, and I think most of you will agree, we have got an epidemic of people not keeping their word. I mean, I am so tired of that. Just so tired of that. You have an appointment, somebody doesn't show up. They don't even call you to tell you they're not coming. You call again. Well, what happened to you yesterday? I had, a, had an appointment. I took off work to meet you here. You didn't show up. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got, I got so busy. Well, I thought you were going to call me back. I'm sorry. I, uh, I just got so busy. I've, I've just got so much going on. I'm just so busy. You know what? That is a lame, <laughs> dumb excuse. I mean, sometimes you can get busy and forget something, but if your excuse for not keeping your word is I'm busy, then you need to rework your schedule. Here's why, and I'm going to tell you a secret, and you can believe this or not believe it, but we all have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's not like, you know, I have too much time and you don't have enough time. Now. In a lifetime, some may live longer than others, but we all have 24 hours a day. And it's amazing to me that some people can accomplish so much with their time, while other people just do absolutely nothing with theirs. And so I want to say, are you busy? But what are you busy doing? <laughs> what do you have to show for it at the end of the day, what are you going to have to show for it at the end of your life? How many really good friends do you have? You got to put time into stuff like that. And you know, I don't mean this at all to be disrespectful. They've both passed on, my mom and dad, and thankfully they're both in heaven. And so since in heaven you can't get mad, they can't get mad at me for what I'm going to say. So. <laughs> Uh, and they would agree now that they see the other side, but my mom and dad, they just basically wasted their whole life. When my dad died, he was 86. There was nobody that cared one thing about him. Didn't have any friends. I mean, I took care of my mom and dad until they died, and you know, we, we tried to treat them decent, but because of what had happened in my life, it was never really like I had a, a real mom and dad. And I had one brother who ended up committing suicide from drugs and alcohol, and they didn't have any money, they couldn't take care of themselves, they were sick. Life is a gift from God. And every day that you have is a gift, and it's precious. And when I say don't waste it, I'm not saying that you have to be working all the time. The, the thing is, is to learn about God's rhythm and to learn how to discern and sense what you need to do when and not be just led around by emotions and feelings. You know, if, if you know that you've got a mess in your home and you need to stay home for a few days and get things cleaned up. You can't get emotional every time somebody calls and wants you to take off and go somewhere. You gotta be able to say no and stay focused and get the things done 
that you need to get done. But there's also times when you maybe want to work all day, and I would have a problem like this, and the better thing to do is not work at all and just lay on the couch all day in my pajamas and watch movies all day. And that's not a waste if it's something you need. But if you're doing that every day, <laughs> then there's a little problem. So we have to have balanced lives, but just being busy. People, here's what I was going to tell you. You put your time into what's really important to you. If something is really important to you, then you will find the time to do it. So to say, I just can't find the time to study the Bible. I just can't find the time to pray. Well, time's not hiding from you. It's right there in front of your face. <laughs> you don't have to go find it. You've got it. All you got to do is rearrange what you're doing with it a little bit and start putting first things first. And when you put first things first, everything else will seem to fall into place. Don't major in minors. Amen? I have a book up here called Seize the Day that I wrote. And I had them bring 400 extra copies of these, this book that I expect you to buy. <laughs> and John Maxwell, many of you probably heard of John Maxwell. He's, he's awesome, and I have the privilege of being able to call him my friend. And he said this, that we should put 80% of our time into the top 20% of our strengths. Most people waste their time trying to strengthen their weaknesses. And they may improve only a very little, no matter how much effort they put into it, while they ignore the development of their strengths and things that they could truly excel at. If everything is a priority to us, then nothing is a priority and we live confused and frustrated lives. Some people try to do everything, so they end up doing nothing really well. Amen? Peter Drucker said, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently what should not be done at all. I'm gonna say that again. There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently what should not be done at all. Now, one of the things that we need to do, Philippians 1 talks about, it's one of Paul's prayers, and um, it's interesting to me the things that Paul prayed for the church. His, his prayers were vastly different than a lot of ours is. He said, I pray that you might learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best, and distinguishing the moral differences, so that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, actually living lives that lead others away from sin. Now, one of the reasons why I like the Amplified Bible is because I'll get something like that out of it. Now, see, that makes it plain. He wants you to live a life that actually leads other people away from sin. So, you've heard it before. Good is sometimes the greatest enemy of best. We think we might be doing a good thing by working at church five or six times a week, when it actually might be a better thing to work there twice a week and spend those other hours that you were working at church because maybe it made you feel good about yourself. Might be better if you spent those talking to your teenage kids.
so they don't try to have to learn everything they want to learn off the internet and then you're getting all over them because of their attitude. <laughs> Come on. Now we're going to talk about pruning tomorrow. How many of you know what pruning is? Oh yeah. You're going to have to be bold to come back tomorrow. Because Jesus said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, <laughs> he trims it away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes it so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. So I finally got it. You're pruned if you do and pruned if you don't. So, in other words, here's the bottom line. God is not going to leave you alone and let you stay the same. Amen? <laughs> God is after you. He wants to make every single one of us a better person so we represent him better in the world because people are dying and going to hell by the thousands every day. And let me tell you something, there are enough Christians in this earth that if we all got out there and acted out what we say we believe, I honestly believe the world would already be saved, Jesus could have come back, and we'd already be out of this mess. You don't get to go home and just keep doing what you were doing. You actually have to go home now after being here and be nicer to somebody. <laughs> I don't want them looking at you and saying, well, going to that Joyce Meyer conference didn't do you any good. <laughs> I want them to see such a change in you that next year they'll beg you to go. Please go. And pruning means to cut away dead parts. God is not interested in dead stuff. Amen? The one guy that Jesus called, he said, well, let me bury my dead relatives first. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. Come on. What kind of dead things do you have in your life? Things that are sucking up your time and bearing no good fruit at all. Every one of you, and I'll include myself, if we would really be honest about what we're doing with our time, everybody in here can find time to do the most important things in life, which is spend time with God, know his word, develop good relationships with people. All of those things are actually more important than making money. <laughs> they are. And we spend so much time trying to climb the ladder of success. Don't spend your whole life doing that, and when you get to the top, finally realize your ladder's leaned against the wrong building that you got what you thought you wanted, but it's not what you wanted after all. Don't just be busy. Make sure you're bearing good fruit. Be determined when you're 90 and you know you don't have much time left that you don't look back and have nothing but regrets. I've worked hard in my life and I've been through a lot of hard stuff, but I, I'm happy to say, and I hope that most of you can say this, if Jesus came for me tonight, I'm leaving a legacy. I'm leaving something that can help people for years and years after I'm gone. And somebody will miss me. Amen. There's so many people that die and nobody even misses them because they weren't contributing anything. Don't, don't just be somebody who just sucks up everything. Be somebody who gives out. Everywhere you go, making somebody else's life better. Adding to wherever you go.
You'll get happier. <laughs> oh, I'm not going anywhere for a while. Oh, no. I'm sticking around a long time to aggravate you guys. I don't care if they got to push me out here if my mouth works. <laughs> no. I am not a quitter. People ask me all the time, well, are you thinking about retirement? How do you retire from a call on your life? I mean, am I just supposed to go to God and say, well, you know, I'm going to retire now. Could I have a preacher's pension? You know, I don't... Luke 10, 38. <laughs> You're laughing. I don't even think I'm being funny. <laughs> now, while they were on their way, Jesus entered a village called Bethany, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached him and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to get up and help me and do her part. <laughs> That's just the way an overly busy frantic person is. They can't stand to see anybody else having a good time. They think everybody ought to work just like they do. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, <laughs> you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things, but there's only one thing that's necessary, and Mary has chosen that better part. Now, let me say a word to you about worry. Every day that we spend worrying is a totally wasted day. You know why? Because worrying doesn't change a thing. Bible says you can worry all you want to. It'll never make you one inch taller. <laughs> worry just does no good. It's like sitting in a rocking chair, rocking all day long. It keeps you busy, but you're still in the same spot at the end of the day. And I'm not saying that I never get into it, but it has helped me to realize I am wasting my time because this is not going to change anything. I'll tell you another thing that's a total waste of time, self-pity. Come on, we might as well end good tonight. Poor me, I feel so sorry for me. You can be pitiful or you can be powerful, but you can't be both. Amen? So many ways that we waste our time. God wants us to walk in wisdom. And you know what I believe wisdom is? This is my own little definition. But I think that wisdom is to choose to do now what you'll be happy with later on. But a person who doesn't have self-control, they, they do what they feel like doing or what they want to do or what screams at them the loudest. And if the devil can keep you running, 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 he can keep something screaming at you all the time. So you have to measure the fruit compared to the effort that you're putting into things. And if you do that, how many of you honestly believe that if you took a really honest look at your time, that there's things that you could easily cut out? Okay, then guess what? If you stay frustrated because you're busy all the time, it's your own fault. Well, I want to remind you again that the Bible never says that we are to be busy. It says that we are to be fruitful.
Today we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite a long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, your, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. And so I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.